Hi everyone and uh, welcome to the next instalment of my conversion of Dragon's M7 Priest in 135th scale into ones used by the Canadians at D-Day. Now as you can see from this short video, the majority of the construction is now complete and ready to be painted. So if you'd like to see how I got to this stage then uh, grab yourself a brew and let's go do some modelling. First of all I've got some uh, card just to cover the uh, open area so that it would protect it from dust and dirt while I was doing the construction. And the first thing was to uh, replace the uh, covers uh, using a PE part and then what I did was to uh, construct the uh, cover uh, to go over the PE part uh, using plastic card. and as you can see it was a simple process of just uh, creating shapes, cutting them down to size and creating this box effect and then that was put on the back to uh, cover over the vent but before any of that could be done uh, it had to be painted on the interior because otherwise it would have been a, a nightmare to do inside and so it was a matter of uh, masking off all of the area um, using some primer and then adding on some of the uh, acrylics and then it, once all of that was dry it was just a simple matter of uh, putting on uh, the oils and just giving it a, a, a little bit of weathering uh, for it to blend in. And there we have it all done and it, that was then glued into place and uh, m managed now to uh, move on to the uh, next section. And uh, here it's just a matter of changing some of the detail, those three nuts there had to be removed and then a uh, fixing plate uh, was put into place uh, using uh, fresh Meng nuts. And here we have some of the uh, detailing on the panel at the back with the uh, wing nuts and further uh, nuts. And as you can see there, we uh, had all of the uh, strips uh, the, to present the, represent the girders. And I was really pleased how all of that uh, detail came out. And that's worked really well. And then it was a matter of uh, starting on the detailing at the back here uh, with the uh, side boxes and vent covers. Uh, first off uh, I needed to create some uh, tie brackets uh, that were put onto the um, boxes at the back of the priests um, using the uh, flat nose pliers. It was just a matter of uh, bending them into shape and uh, adding those to the side with CA glue. And as you can see there's a small PA um, lock there and that was just a matter of having to add on the um, rivets uh, using a 0.5 mil uh, pewter sheet and then uh, using the rivet maker from RP tools and then those were added with um, CA glue. Now a quick uh, pro tip um, if you can avoid using PE life is a lot, a lot easier as you can see on the left hand side we, we have the uh, PE part uh, from Voyager on the uh, far right hand side is the uh, part uh, from Dragon and then in the middle is uh, my modification. It's very much a simple matter of scraping off as much plastic as you possibly can to make it wafer thin uh, using uh, your scrapers and your sanding and if you don't want to create any damage that's an ideal way of uh, making a fender without having to use the PA part. Now at the back it was a matter of uh, getting everything boxed in um, so first of all what we needed to do is just to strip out a bit of that detail to allow the uh, supporting struts to uh, fit in nice and flat and also put a base plate in and then a bit of a strange rhomboid uh, shape uh, was created uh, for the sides of the box and then using the kit part that was uh, modified by uh, cutting off the tabs And then what we did was uh, added on a strip of plastic card uh, with a, a smaller strip uh, for strengthening. And then that was added onto the uh, back onto those uh, two side panels that were made earlier. And then a, a base was put all together at the bottom to create the box. And then it was a matter of just boxing in all of the um, structure at the bottom um, using strips um, for strengthening. And here we uh, used a clear uh, styrene tube uh, to create the circular effect. And then we made some uh, discs um, using the cutters and those were then cut in half and put onto the top and the bottom. And I was really pleased how that had uh, turned out. 
and then we created the uh, box on the side little strips and then the, the back panel itself and then just to remember underneath uh, a further panel was put in just to make sure that everything was boxed in and then it was a simple matter of adding on some more strips and some rivets uh, to uh, add on the detail so as we go around here you can see how everything is now closed in all of the uh, detailing has been added on using uh, the Meng uh, rivets and there was a little bit of filler here and there but not a great deal was needed because uh, it did work out quite nicely and this is now the, the basis of the structure which will allow me to, to make the stack the exhaust stack going upwards now I didn't do many measurements so I'm just going to go around with the ruler now uh, for those of you following on so you can have an idea of the sizes but really what you're after is trying to get the width of the stack to be the same as that uh, vent cover uh, that I did right uh, at the first in the video so all the detail coming along really nicely not a lot needs to do at the back um, because that will be covered later with the uh, stowage so now it's a, a matter of doing the uh, exhaust stack itself so we had the two um, side panels they were cut to, to shape to give the um, uh, that sort of angled look at the bottom those were then added with a couple of struts for strengthening and then it was a matter of boxing that in now here as you can see I made a little bit of a mistake and I've left a gap now if I was to fill that gap with filler uh, the filler would soon crack so quite easily what you need to do is just to cut a little bit of strip off put it in with some glue and then just glue it into place and then as you can see that is a better way of filling the larger gaps and then you can sand that down or if need be maybe add a little bit of filler but yeah really pleased how that went and like I say it was just a matter of now finishing off that back box and as you can see that's all come out really well and as I said to you before as you can see the width is the same as that uh, vent cover that we did originally now it's a matter of adding on all the detail um, for every rivet there's got to be a back of a rivet so not only do you do the front you've got to do the back as well what a lot of fun that was but uh, we got there in the end and as you can see it was well worth doing because it does make it a nice feature on that back there now we need to do the top of the stack itself so we have the side panels the front and the back panels cut to size And at the very top there's a, a little grill that was used uh, using some PE mesh from the spares box and with those uh, side struts put on that fitted in quite nicely at the top and that's all boxed off neatly and I was really pleased how that was now looking and then what we needed to do was to uh, put a, a curved side panel at the top um, as you can see that was the size of the circle and then we just cut a triangular section off that circle and then that was reinforced um, with a, a cover as well so with those smaller parts cut uh, what we needed to do was to create the uh, brackets that hold the stack together added on the meng nuts and then some further uh, round tubing and then finally we had to make our own little covers to complete uh, those bracket section lovely piece of detailing which I was really pleased with and as you can see here uh, the top of the uh, exhaust is the same as the top of the side panels as well then we had to make a, a metal brace to go across the back and this is purely to hold in all that the stowage that's going to be going on there later on and there's a very simple process of using a plastic card strip and square rod and that was attached using glue at the back now we had a couple of uh, little brackets that needed to be made whether these are towing brackets or lifting brackets I'm not too sure but uh, the photographs clearly showed these in place so it was a matter of just scratch building and putting them on and then lastly we needed to make the uh, fuel can holders um, again using plastic strip uh, they were mounted on the back and then we just used some rivets uh, for detail as well so I was really pleased how that all came out 
so as we go around now as you can see the fuel cans fit in place quite nicely those brackets again nicely detailed and also you can see the underside how that's all come out nicely as well and then moving to the other side again the fuel can holders the lifting eyes and also the uh, boxes on the side with the uh, tie hooks for the ropes and there we are very pleased with how that had all turned out so I'll just leave you some photos so you can uh, see in more detail So the next stage was to add more of the uh, filler uh, to uh, represent the uh, Bostic glue, waterproof glue that they used. And that was put all the way around uh, with thinner. And then we had to put some uh, strengthening uh, cables, uh, which is just five millimeter wire and uh, scratch built the uh, fittings at the top. And then it was a matter of getting some boxes out of the spares drawer and just building it up. Um, I've put a little uh, plastic card table in the middle uh, for support um, and it's really there just to give form and shape because this will all be co covered over with tarpaulin and sheets at the end anyway but that gives you an idea of all of the storage that's going to be going on the back in some shape or form uh, detailing uh, we had to put some uh, PE strip along the side so using the PE bending tool and some CA glue this is a real bitch of a job but uh, really pleased with how that turned out and then using uh, some more plastic card strips we finished off the detailing on the side panels um, a couple of little um, 0.8 mil uh, rivets there lots more meng nuts on both sides but really pleased with how that finished uh, we did a tarpaulin holder uh, one there's usually two on the sides but obviously we're going to be using one at the top so I'll just put one on the side and as you can see I replaced the handles as well and here I'm using uh, microsole tape uh, to uh, represent the uh, asbestos covering uh, that was put around the bottom and around the um, uh, boxes at the back uh, for waterproofing and also on the front lamps and again here we put in some more of that uh, thinner and uh, to represent the Bostic uh, moving on to the front uh, we have the two boxes here um, again uh, with the uh, covering at the back up with the tape and then it was a matter of uh, doing some of the um, detailing at the front with the um, makeshift uh, girders uh, framework uh, which would actually uh, hold in uh, more of the stowage at the front rather than use girders myself I actually made up the girders just using plastic card strip and making a, a simple framework making sure that the uh, spare wheels would fit in correctly and as you can see that fitted on the front very well indeed added a couple of strengthening uh, rods and then uh, research shows there's a couple of plates that are attached uh, near the front uh, dry sprockets and those were added on again with some meng nuts for detailing so really pleased with uh, how that turned out you can also see how the lamps have been covered in tape uh, to represent the uh, asbestos covering and some more waterproofing was added there with the filler and thinner uh, just a bit of detailing here we've got the cleaning rods uh, the tips were made with a pewter strip wrapped around some uh, uh, plastic card uh, rod and here uh, I've decided to uh, make a cable reel uh, so we're starting off with 8 mil discs uh, from plastic card and then uh, a quick uh, pro tip on how to make a ridge um, on a cable reel just get yourself a little bit of wire squeeze it tight and flat using your pliers and then with some CA glue just place it on top and then that gives you a lovely ridge going all the way around the disc we also had to do some of the um, sprocket indentations on the top as you can see there 
and also a little disc to go in the middle then with a little piece of um, tubing that made the actual reel itself and then using some nylon thread uh, to represent the wire that was wrapped around the middle and fixed in place with CA glue then we made a small little bit of a framework with plastic card and then the, the actual stand was made from 5mm wire uh, bent into shape uh, using uh, pliers and again that was glued in place with the CA glue so there we have it it's a quick and easy way of making yourself a little cable reel very pleased with how that came out and that will be sitting on the back so just going around um, you can see the PE uh, used to uh, hold on the uh, tarpaulin cover straps you'll also see I've made all the little hooks um, from wire using all the Meng uh, nuts and wing nuts uh, at the back here we've got the value gear um, set for the um, tarpaulins and that will all be painted in, into place and again re-emphasizing all the detail that was done on the back and with those strengthening wires the actual uh, handles that we replaced that was done with 6mm wire and even though there is no tarpaulin uh, wire on that side I've still put the brackets in place always be attention to detail and here we've put some more of the uh, Bostic uh, filler which will be painted up black during the painting process and all the way around the top and the sides as well so just uh, need a little bit of touch up here and there at the back but uh, I was really pleased that I got that painted in first and so as you can see the interior is all aired out now and looking really nice and mustn't forget all the additional extras we've got the tracks there um, lots of added extras lots of stowage and really just to go to town on the detailing to try and bring this model to life so that just leaves me to say thank you very much indeed uh, for your continued support of my work i hope you've enjoyed this video and uh, i'm looking forward to now getting this all painted up um, and then we can start moving on uh, with this build so Thanks very much indeed for popping in and having a look and happy modeling.